Good morning. We welcome you and thank you for joining us this third Sunday of Advent, Gaudete Sunday, at St. George's Episcopal Church in New Orleans, Louisiana. I am the Reverend David Lowry, the celebrant, and I am joined by Deacon Joey Clavijo and our singers Ryan Reynolds and Garen Mesa. Our service is Holy Eucharist Rite Two, which begins on page 355 of the Book of Common Prayer. If you don't have a prayer book at home, you can go to bcponline.org on your computer and use the left-hand menu system to find the Holy Eucharist. And then Rite Two. We will begin in just a moment, but before we do, we are going to sing our, our opening hymn is 616, Hail to the Lord's Anointed. Secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen.
with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Stir up your power, O Lord, and bread with great might come amongst us. And because we are sorely hindered by our sins, let your bountiful grace and mercy speedily help and deliver us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Amen. A lesson from the book of Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance for our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall rise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations, and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will gladly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God. For he has clothed me with garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all nations. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's gradual is from Psalm 126, which can be found in your bulletin or on page 782 in the Book of Common Prayer. We will read the psalm responsibly by half verse. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then were we like those who dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us and we are glad indeed. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the watercourses of the Negev. Those who sowed with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying the seed, will come again with joy, shouldering their sheaves. A lesson from the letter of Paul to the Thessalonians. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise the words of prophets, but test everything. Hold fast to that which is good, abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to John, glory to you, Lord Christ. There was a man sent back from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, and the prophet, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The third Sunday in Advent is Gaudete Sunday. It's one that is rejoiceful, at least in theory, and it's about the Blessed Virgin Mary. Uh, ironically, our lessons today make no mention of Mary, and they are actually uh, difficult lessons in so many ways. They focus on John the Baptist, not on Mary mother of our Lord and they remind us that Jesus came prophetically into life with a very special purpose of which death and resurrection was a vital part let us focus a little bit on John the Baptist we believe that John was an Essene 
that is part of a group of Jewish people uh, who had left the cities and gone into the countryside to prophesy, but also to remove themselves from the great troubles that existed during the time before, during, and after the birth of our Lord. They were in the wilderness, and they were preparing, indeed, the way for our Lord. And they were doing it by being quiet, pensive, prayerful, but also in some ways disobedient both to the Roman authorities and to the priests that of the temple. That is, they were an alternative group. What they did was wash people. The word baptize, Greek is baptizo, I wash. It's very much what you do when you wake up in the morning and before you go to bed at night. You wash yourselves so you could be clean. Of course, the John the Baptist and the Essenes were not really referring to just washing oneself physically. They were talking about washing oneself, oneself spiritually, that we be clean. And of course, part of the intention of the early church was to focus on all of us, followers of Christ, being washed clean, not only by our baptism, for most of us when we were a little child, but spiritually on an ongoing basis. Sin is always at our doorstep. We are always tempted not to do what our Lord calls us to do. It's part of our human predicament. And that's really the part of our predicament that God sent his son to resolve, to make new, to make clean, to make hopeful. It was no accident that Jesus, at the beginning of his ministry, which was probably when he was 30 years old, and if we follow the Synoptic Gospels, that's Matthew, Mark, uh, and Luke, uh, was uh, a one-year ministry. If we follow John, it could have been a three-year ministry because John has Jesus going to the Passover feast three different times in Jerusalem. And since that only happens once a year, that would have meant three years uh, for Jesus' ministry to last. But whether it was one year or three years, Jesus' ministry began with a symbolic washing. Now, Jesus didn't need to be washed. Jesus, the Son of God, was clean at birth, clean through his life, and clean at his death. But Jesus reminded himself and us that we in our baptism have been washed and through God's grace we continue to be washed on a regular basis. Christmas is a time when we sometimes forget the underlying truths that we are celebrating and we get caught up in the joy of a little child and in all the jubilation of a celebration. This third Sunday, Gaudete Sunday and Advent, reminds us through lessons that we are always working to be washed. We are always working to be prepared, not only to meet our Lord, but to fulfill our baptismal vows, to be clean, as clean as we can be, and always ready to confess, repent, and return to the Lord. It is important that this last Sunday before we get really ready for Christmas, that we remember that God is calling us not only to Jesus as a child, but to Jesus as an adult redeemer who went to the cross to die for us, that we who are baptized into his name his life are also baptized into his death and into his resurrection. May God bless us in these weeks leading up to the celebration of the birth of a Savior. But may we always be reminded 
that we are walking in the way of Jesus to be sure, but also in the way of John the Baptist, preparing the future of our world to meet our Lord and to meet our Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We proclaim our faith, saying together the Nicene Creed, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was a man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are form four, found on page 388 of the Book of Common Prayer. Please respond to each petition, saying, Hear our prayer. Let us pray for the Church and for the whole world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the way of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours, and grant that we may serve Christ in them, and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, and spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles, and bring them to the joy of your salvation. Of your charity, we ask your prayers for the following concerns and people. For our seminarian, Lindsay Audrey. For the sick, Barbara Kanaka, Bridget Wilbur, Jimmy Nebrato, Shirley Cole Gowdy, Judith Fink, Ilse Fink, Ruth Skirto, Isabel Oliver, Marva Mitchell, Marshall Monfort, Deborah Dawes, Mary, Charles Jackson, Nancy DuPont, Bishop Charles Jenkins, James Pantera, Lee Wolgeman, Catherine and Harold, Jim Murphy, Glenn, Jenny Haylock, and those suffering from COVID-19. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you have promised to hear what we ask in the name of your Son. Accept and fulfill our petitions, we pray, not as we ask in our ignorance, nor as we deserve in our sinfulness, but as you know and love us in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 
Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the mercy and the kingdom and the power. Everything in heaven and on earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head above all. We continue with the Eucharistic prayer B. 
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life, that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may without shame or fear rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil, and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Blessed John the Baptist, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation, by him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen.
And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God, alleluia, alleluia.